Good morning, Mount Calvary Church and school students. Pastor Jonathan, uh, and I'm glad to be with you for another one of our daily devotionals. I hope that you have enjoyed digging into God's Word these last few weeks as we've journeyed through the book of 1 Corinthians. One of the things that I love about God's Word is it gives us a lot of specific direction and application for our lives. And there, there's a lot of black and white, right or wrong scenarios that the Bible addresses. But sometimes we're faced with a gray area, an, an issue or, or a situation that the Bible doesn't specifically talk about. And then what are we supposed to do? Well, Joshua talked about this a few days ago in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, and we're going to talk again about it here at the end of chapter 10 in 1 Corinthians. And we know what the situation is. Uh, the church in Corinth were, were, was faced with this issue, should they eat meat sacrificed to idols? See, there's kind of these two groups of believers in the church. One group of believers was was so excited that, that they put their faith and trust in Christ, that they had this newfound freedom in Christ, uh, and that they realized that there was only one true God, that the idols weren't real, and so they chose to eat meat. And then there was this other group of believers who kind of left that way of, of idol worship behind them and put their faith in Christ, and so they wanted to stay as far away from that past practice as possible, so they refused to eat meat. So how does Paul address both these groups? How does he bring them to some kind of con conclusion or resolution? Well, I think Paul challenges them to practice the law of love in making their decisions, asking them as they, as they practice the law of love, does my decision glorify God and does it honor my, my neighbor or honor my other brothers and sisters? If I want to honor God in the gray area choices of my life, I need to ask myself those same two questions before I make a choice. The first question, does this glorify God? Look at 1 Corinthians 10, 31. It says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense to Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in everything I do, not seeking my own advantage, but that of many that they may be saved. The idea of the glory of God or glorifying God can be difficult because there's no place in our culture where the word glory maintains its proper usage. Glory properly defined is publicly praising and honoring and bringing fame to. To glorify something is to give it glory. To glorify is to light something up brilliantly. And Paul suggests that as Christians, all of our lives, starting with the most basic ordinary things like eating and and drinking should be lived in a way uh, that, that God is publicly praised and honored and made famous. And the attitude and activities of our lives is meant to make the beauty of God light up brilliantly for those around us to see. So it's important for us as believers to recognize that we bring glory to God, not only when we gather to worship him publicly, but we can glorify him in the everyday activities of our lives. Paul is pretty clear that his life's decisions were not motivated to glorify himself, but his Savior. So every part of our lives should glorify, should illuminate our Savior and bring him honor and glory. And again, if I want to practice uh, the law of love and the gray areas of, of my life, I need to ask another question. And the question is this, is it good for my neighbor? Look at 1 Corinthians 10, 23. It says this, all things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. Again, Paul is talking about different situations in eating food sacrificed to idols here in chapter 10. And he says, when you go to buy meat in the meat market, don't ask if it was sacrificed to idols, uh, but, but buy the meat and eat it with a clear conscience. He also says, if an unbeliever invites you to your, to his house uh, for dinner, then go to his house and eat whatever he puts out in front of you with a clear conscience, honoring his kindness. But if another believer is at the meal there at that unbeliever's house and they say, this food was sacrificed to an idol, refrain from exercising your freedom in Christ so that you don't offend the other believer's conscience. Always choose to build another believer up instead of exercising your freedom in Christ. And in the gray areas of life, we glorify God when we choose to honor and do what is best for others, to do what is best for our neighbors. Uh, and in the gray areas of life, uh, our freedom in Christ comes with great responsibility. Warren Wearsby is one of my favorite authors, and, and in his commentary here on 1 Corinthians, he, he gives us a number of good questions to ask as we seek to exercise our freedom in Christ in the gray areas uh, of our lives and in deciding what to do and how to honor God in those gray areas. And he says, while all things are lawful, ask yourself these questions. And listen to these questions. I think they're important questions 
questions for us to, to ask. The first question is, will this decision dominate or enslave me? 1 Corinthians 6, 12. The second question is, will this decision make my brother stumble? 1 Corinthians 8, 13. Third question is, will this decision build me and others up or tear us down? 1 Corinthians 10, 23. The fourth question is, will this decision only please me or will it glorify Christ? 1 Corinthians 10, 31. And the final question is, will this decision help me win the loss to Christ or turn them away? 1 Corinthians 10, 33. My hope and prayer is that we would exercise our freedom in Christ responsibly, choosing to glorify God and honoring our, our neighbors above ourselves and pointing other people to Jesus Christ. Hope you have a great day.